welcome back. Today I'm here at the cabin and here we are at part two of starting my own mushroom farm. So as you guys know, I go out in the woods a lot and I get my own mushrooms. And now I want to start a little farm here in the micro scale. I'm going to be um, starting some cultures of shiitake mushroom and the yellow oyster. Stay tuned. First thing we have to do is uh, select some trees. Um, basically, I'm just going to need one tree. I'm going to use uh, a maple and uh, shiitake and oysters love deciduous trees in particular you know maple and beech and oak so uh, i'm gonna go find a maple tree pretty close to the cabin because i want to drop it in an area where it's gonna be shady and then we will inoculate them with my mycelium impregnated dowels wow so i was just royce is over here fooling around i'm like what the heck are you doing look at these mushrooms oh my god <laughs> Look at that. Look at all these oyster mushrooms. Woo, right? It just rained and Royce is standing down here. I'm like, what are you standing around? And look at, he found a whole thing of mushrooms for me. <laughs> look at that. Oh, beauty. Oh man. Oh, beautiful. Very little infestation. <laughs> yes. There's any doubt you guys that um, oyster mushrooms love um, hardwoods like maple. Take a look. Woohoo! Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, we had a really bad storm the other day, and uh, this uh, limb, this is actually the tree where I did my, uh, well, my maple uh, tapping. And you can see, let's see if we can find a hole, hole right there. So that limb was taken down, and <laughs> Royce is down here standing on it, like, what the heck? So yeah, I'm gonna take these off and dry them. That's amazing. Well, that's awesome. So I gotta go back and harvest those ones, but now let's go and uh, get ready to make my own. So here I am pretty close to the cabin and there's some maple here, right there in front of me. There's two of them actually, and this one's really straight. I'm looking for a log that's uh, three inches to six inches in diameter, which is what we've kind of got right here. Um, Cause I'm gonna be putting in about 200 plugs. So this one's fairly straight. It's in an open area, shaded, so I can kind of um, pop in my plugs here. So this one looks like it'll be the ticket. All right, so I've got him leashed up for the big event here. I just don't want him to get hit by a falling tree. He's pretty pumped up about the whole thing. He's used to chainsaws and stuff, so he's not too worried about the whole situation. But I uh, just want to be safe. she goes. So now with the tree down, uh, we need to bring them into three to four foot lengths so we can um, have our logs ready to inoculate. So they're all down here and we've got the logs uh, some decent lengths here. So I've got 200 plugs to start. So I've got four nice logs right there. So I'll be working in the shade today uh, to get these all set up and I'll take you along on that. Um, it's nice that it's in an easy to access area. Thinking this is a spot where I'm going to put them. Uh, it's mostly shaded. The sun kind of skirts around here but it's open enough that the logs will get rained on. You only get too dehydrated with the hot sun um, and I can kind of prop them up against that to keep them relatively off the ground. So just getting them set up off the ground here. So I've got a couple of other logs that we're just uh, resting them on here. And I will be inoculating them soon. But uh, yeah, so this is the idea. You want to have um, your logs, uh, they shouldn't look like they've got mushrooms growing on them already. Let's put it that way. And you want them off the ground so they don't uh, colonize other species of mushroom. So it's going to lay them all down like that. And they should be fairly shaded. I mean, the sun will kind of kind of go around the tree line right here. Um, I'll take a look midday. If it looks like this is uh, way too sunny, I can just sort of move them back a little bit that way. I can shove them the opposite direction. I just want them exposed to the rain. Um, it rained really well a few days ago. Well, obviously, since that uh, <laughs> oyster mushroom flush just popped right out. Um, so I want these accessible to the rains because I'm not going to be here to water the logs. Like a lot of people will water them at home and you probably should once or twice a week. 
but uh, I can't do that. So um, this is the best that they're going to get. I'm back at the logs after the rainstorm and they're nice and soaked. Uh, I've got everything I need here pretty much. So I've got my plug spawn. So you guys watched my video a while back there talking a bit about these. So these are just little dowels, little plugs actually um, impregnated uh, with mycelium from shiitake and this one's from the yellow oyster. So you know I picked these mushrooms because they're very easy to grow. They're medicinal. Um, I'm just going to produce quite a lot per log and I can probably get a few flushes a year. So yellow oyster and shiitake do well on the deciduous uh, hardwood. And, uh, you know, in six to ten months, I think I should be getting some production. Um, the cold strain that you see here for the shiitake, that means it uh, it will flush in anywhere between two and ten degrees Celsius. So that's perfect for here. And the oysters, I'll probably get some spring and fall um, flushes. I also have some soy wax to seal. Um, once I stick these plugs in the log, we'll seal over it. And I've got a little bit of a, a can here I cut off and just these little swabs here to kind of, uh, once I melt this, I'll use my little tiny camp stove to do that and I'll just sort of swab it over the areas where I drilled the holes. So here is the 5 16 drill bit and just a hammer that I have around the cabin here and uh, I've got my little Ryobi drill. So let's get at it. So what I'm doing is I'm just drilling a hole about an inch deep and using the 5 16 drill bit and I'm going about six inches apart uh, and then the rows themselves will be about a couple inches apart and you're going to want to stagger them so the next row would kind of start over here. I'm going to do this all the way around the log and these logs are a little over four feet but you just need basically three to four foot section of log um, and then just kind of go all the way around the log. The log should be three to six inches in diameter. So I'm just going to drill some holes and then we'll pop in some of the plugs. So when you get your holes all drilled, uh, you'll see there's a diamond pattern. So everything's kind of offset a bit. So what I do is I drill the holes in my logs and then now we're just going to pop in those little plugs. It's faster to do it this way. You drill, you put your plugs in and then you wax them all at the end. Just a quicker way to do it. And remember, do your holes all the way around the log. I'm going to start with the yellow oyster mushrooms first. And these uh, plugs are impregnated with the mycelium and that's why they're white. Um, there's about a hundred in here. So you just here, I'll just grab one out. So you can see there it is. And there's obviously a little bit of grain there that's been impregnated as well. That nice white mycelium that you see there. This is what we need. This is going to spread through the log and then eventually it will fruit and the yellow oyster will pop out. So how it goes is that you align this with one of the little holes here and then we tap it in. There you go. So don't worry if any of it squishes out. That's fine. There'll be lots in the, uh, the little plug itself. So we just kind of keep doing that all the way along and then uh, after I'm going to show you how we wax them. So I'm moving on to the next log here and I'm just showing you the little uh, plugs before I bang them in but that's kind of the pattern that I'm making so there's just some space uh, in between them. Each one of these logs takes about I don't know, maybe 10 minutes to prepare so it's a pretty quick job. So the logs are done. Um, what I have to do now is uh, seal the plugs. So these two here are the oyster and the other two over there are the shiitake. So um, what I've got to do is I've got my little stove right here and I just and I just pop the top off a little pop can and I'm going to um, melt some soy wax in there. And then I'm going to use one of these little guys right here. Uh, I got this, I don't know, at a leather store. Um, I don't know where else you can get these, but they're like kind of like a little soft pad. And you're going to dip it in the soy wax, and then you're going to paint it over the openings. And uh, why we're going to do that is just to prevent other mushroom species from getting into the wound in the tree, uh, just to protect this little plug from drying out as well. Nice and hot, this absorbs a lot of uh, wax. So, what you need to do is just daub this 
on uh, one of the spots there, just like that. These are a little hard to see. This one got a little bit smooshed, so I'm going to go a little bit wider in this area. Another one right here. Perfect. And you can see where you did it. Um, it uh, obviously dries in as wax, so it seals the holes for you. So we'll go ahead and do this with all of the logs, and then we'll get them ready. They're all done. So all the little holes are sealed with wax. Uh, kind of looks like a bird's hat at my little setup there, but uh, yeah, we're all good to go. So what you do normally is if you're at home with these logs, you know, in your yard, you'd water these at least once to twice a week um, to keep everything nice and moist, especially when they start to flush. Eventually, you get these little primordia, these little baby mushrooms, and you don't want them to dry out. So you want to really intensify the watering during that time. Here, of course, I'm off grid, so nature's just going to have to take its course. That's how it is with everything around here. So I've got them in an area where they are open to the rain, but um, you know the sun won't hit them too much. It's kind of tucked behind the trees there and, and goes around like that. So I think this will be a good spot for them. A little bit of dappled sunlight is fine, but if it's in the blazing heat, like in the field, that would be a really, really bad choice. So I'm looking forward to these guys uh, flushing out. I'm hoping uh, in the next six to 10 months. So obviously they're not gonna flush over the winter. So probably the spring. So I'll start checking them really closely and see what's going on. Um, and uh, well, fingers crossed, things will work out well. If things work out really well. I think next year I'll really expand the mushroom farm, but I wanna use this as a learning experience. Obviously if this works out as planned, it will really um, produce a lot of mushrooms for me. So once I get a lot of production out of these logs, I'm going to have to really up my game in terms of um, preserving them. Thanks so much for tuning in today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed uh, me starting my little mushroom farm there. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Or if you've done this before, please let me know. I'm excited to hear about your journey with mushroom farming as well. Hope you guys have a wonderful week as always. Take care.